Okay, I got a little video for you fellow Hashimoto's people out there. I keep getting this message from people who are getting diagnosed with Hashimoto's and don't know what to do. They're not getting any real advice from the doctors and they're not feeling better. So this video is for you. So my tips for where to start when you've got Hashimoto's. Number one is your medication. What medication you're, are you on, if any? Is it a synthetic or is it desiccated pig thyroid? If you are on a synthetic, I would recommend switching to desiccated pig thyroid. Um, and if you wanna know the reason why, go to stopthethyroidmadness.com and they explain it all there. But you're basically, your thyroid needs more than what the synthetic stuff is providing. And the pig thyroid is very close to ours. And so it does get that, uh, give us what we need. And we've been doing it for like years and years and years before synthetic stuff was on the market and it was pushed onto us. Um, and people started not doing so well on that stuff. So uh, some doctors might give you a hard time about making the switch. Um, do it anyways and if they refuse to do it find a new doctor that's my recommendation i had to go through several doctors of course things are changing a lot in the more recent years so you might not have a hard time with it but just in case you do um and then education is the second tip so know what you're dealing with know what the symptoms are know what a flare-up looks like know what triggers your disease there's tons of books out there you can look on amazon or you can look on um audible because if you have Hashimoto's then you probably fall asleep as soon as you start reading <laughs> and so audiobooks are life um, again stop the thyroid madness has a book as well so there's that um, you could start there or uh, like I said on Amazon um, and then the third tip is lifestyle changes and this is really actually a big one um, diet is a huge huge thing so get rid of all the processed stuff um, get rid of the dairy get rid of the gluten uh, the soy. Those are your main things to get out of your diet. Soy, dairy, gluten, and processed stuff. Uh, which, by the way, anything in the package is pretty much uh, consider that full of chemicals and not safe for you. Um, also, look at your personal products. What are you putting on your skin? Makeup, lotion, hair products. Um, what are you using in your home to clean? Are you using air fresheners? Do you have those things plugged into the wall to make things smell good? Yeah bad, bad, bad. Get that out. Get that out. That's tearing you up. Um, and then the last lifestyle change that I would recommend is actually a meditation practice because, well, there's a lot of science behind it and I won't get into it, but just do it. And if you don't, if you haven't had, um, don't have a practice yet, look up a uh, heart math Institute or heart math. They've got some really amazing products out there to help you get into that zone that you need to, in order to heal. Um, it's really good stuff. Uh, also, Dr. Dispenza talks a lot about it, um, and even Tony Robbins has a um, YouTube 10-minute guided meditation, and I think it's called Morning Ritual or something like that, free, and you can do that, follow along with him just to get started. Um, they actually recommend at least doing it three times a day for five minutes. Um, then last... If you're doing all of those things and you still feel like crap, there's a huge chance that you got something else going on. Um, and that's really common for autoimmune disease. Once one thing goes down the toilet, usually a lot of other things will follow suit. So if you're still feeling like crap, once you've got your thyroid under control, um, try checking into your adrenals because your thyroid and your adrenals work together. So when your, when your thyroid went out, your adrenals picked up the slack and they, it can compensate for quite a lot, for, for quite a while, depending on what your health is like. Uh, but eventually it's gonna burn out too. And then, then, and then you're dealing with two burnt out um, energy producers, quote unquote. So um, I would recommend getting the um, 24 hour cortisol saliva test where you spit into a little tube four times a day and then you send it into the lab and they can tell you where your cortisol levels are at at different points of the day. The blood test is not effective. Don't waste your time with that. You will have to pay for it. Uh, usually insurance is not covering it. So just giving you a heads up. You can do um, either order it yourself on yourlabs.com, I think is what it's called, or just, just Google like self labs um, or ask your doctor to do it. Again, you might have a hard time if it's a standard Western doctor, you might, they might not even be familiar with that type of a test. So just know that the blood test is not going to do you any good. Again, that information will be on stopthethyroidmadness.com as well. Um, and as well, they'll talk about your sex hormones, which is another next thing I was going to say. 
a lot of times our sex hormones will get out of whack and um, with with our autoimmune disease and that will leave us with no energy, um, inability to gain muscle or lose fat. All these type of things are regulated or um, affected by our hormones, our sex hormones. So testosterone, estrogen or estradiol, um, progesterone and DHEA. Those are your sex hormones and those are what should be tested. Um, mm -mm. And then leaky gut or candida, IBS, any kind of problems with your, your gut basically, super, super common. In fact, if you have an autoimmune disease, just you have it. <laughs> you need to heal your gut. So you can look into ways to heal your gut, either through my content or anybody else. You know, there's tons of ways out there. Um, just real quick tips, um, collagen or, or um, bone broth or uh, gelatin, those type of things that will help restore the gut uh, lining. Candida, uh, if you think you've got candida, look that up and look at the symptoms. There's a whole protocol behind that, so I can't even go into the, as, as extreme as that is. But all the things I said to get out of your diet are all going to help those, uh, are all critical for healing your leaky gut. And then the last thing is toxicity. So because our gut is so jacked up most of the time, it allows things to pass through into our bloodstream that don't belong there and our body attacks it, you know, because it doesn't belong there. So the problem with that is, well, when a real invader comes, your body's too busy, uh, occupied, taking care of the um, little molecules of chemicals or um, even foods, you know, at some points uh, that's in your bloodstream that doesn't belong there. So then, it's basically free reign for viruses and parasites and other things to take over um, that your your immune system should be working on but can't because it's busy with all the other stuff. So all that inflammation that you might have in your joints and, and other places, that is not a good sign. That's a sign that you've got something going on and you need to address it right away. Um, so yeah, toxicity, heavy metals, uh, built up hormones and chemicals, all of that stuff is inside our body and it needs to come out. So facilitate that with detoxing methods, with um, removing the chemicals so that we stop bringing more chemicals on board and um, drink lots of water because water will help you get the, the, the toxins out. And when I say a lot of water, I drink a gallon of water a day. Um, so, all right guys, hopefully those tips helped you and uh, let me know if you have any more questions.